Okay guys, so the last thing that we're gonna do with this series on pulmonary function tests is go over some cases. Uh, I would really recommend checking out that link that I included in the previous video from the University of Washington. It's a fantastic resource. Um, it's where a lot of these cases came from. So we're gonna go over, I think I have on here about three cases to demonstrate how we're gonna go about interpreting a PFT. And uh, I think this will be very useful for you guys. Cause there's nothing like actually seeing something, right? So. Uh, here is an example of a mock uh, case. So um, again, let's go through step by step. So the first thing that we always look at when we're determining the type of condition, right? Uh, again, just remembering patients coming to our clinic for a spirometry test have symptoms. We're suspecting it's either going to be an obstructive defect or a restrictive defect, right? It's going to be one or the other, okay? So we're gonna look at FVC because we know that FVV1, FVC ratio because we know that has a very distinct you know, difference between the two. Remembering that again, it's gonna be less than 0.7, the ratio in a um, patient with a obstructive defect. And it's gonna be normal in a patient with a restrictive defect or greater even than 0.08, um, an restrictive defect. All right, so let's look at this patient. All right, well, they're actual 73, so borderline, borderline uh, low. Okay, well, let's look at their FEV, FEC. Well, FEC is 102% of predicted and you know, if we look at what the value is, you know, it's a pretty close to what they should be getting on their actual test, so pretty good test. All right, well, let's look at FEV1% predicted. It's 95%, okay, so what's going on here? Residual volume, 109. Total lung capacity is a little bit higher than normal. Uh, DLCL is preserved, so what's actually going on here? All right, well, this patient's actually a healthy patient. So I, I did want to trip you guys up with a little bit of uh, you know, what a normal test would look like, but this is a normal test. Uh, so this patient, uh, the FEC and FEV1, you know, a little bit above um, normal, a little bit below normal, that's still within the normal limit. Uh, and even though the FEV, FEV1, FVC ratio is a little bit less than normal, uh, it's still above 0.7, so we couldn't call it an obstructive defect. Um, it's most certainly not a restrictive defect because the lungs are normal and diffusion capacity is normal. Uh, this is actually an older patient, so it wouldn't be too surprising that residual volume is a little bit higher. Again, remembering that as we age, um, the compliance of the lung increases because there's less elastin. The lungs inflate a little bit because, you know, get a little bit bigger because of some of those changes in, um, you know, elastic recoil forces. So... Looking at uh, the volume uh, flow volume loop in this patient, again the black um, you know represent the predicted values, and this patient also they assessed it following a, um, a bronchodilator, so there's pre and post values, but um, you know, pre and post, so post bronchodilator, which is often done to see if it's a reversible bronco you know, constriction, like we you know see in asthma, is that reversible obstructive defect versus a fixed obstructive defect that we would see in COPD. So uh, the black dots represent, again, the normal plot, what we would expect, predicted values. And you know, his, his fall pretty close within that. Like they don't look much different than we would expect, um, you know, um, even before the bronchodilators. So they have a little bit of an improvement. This is the, the, the post bronchodilators. This is the pre bronchodilators. You know, looks pretty similar. Don't see a huge drop off compared to normal. So this is a normal flow volume loop, um, older patient, you know, nothing too concerning. So uh, that's a normal test. All right, so let's do our next, our next case. Okay, so again, first thing we always look at, what is the actual FEV1, FEC ratio? 47%. And we said less than 0.7, right? Less than 0.7 or 0.7. All right, that doesn't even look clear at all. Let's clean that up a little bit. Yeah, this just looks weird. All right, make that cleaner for you guys. Sorry about that. Um, so less than 0.7, the 
0 0.7, right? That would indicate an obstructive defect. And this is you know, 47% or 0.47. This would be obstructive. Okay. All right. So what else would we expect to, you know, to, to be decreased? Okay. So we're going to look at percent predicted FEV1. In this patient, percent predicted FEV1 is 25. Okay. Um, so that would classify them as a very severe, you know, obstructive defect. Okay. Or very severe COPD. All right. What else would we expect? Well, we would expect residual volume to be increased. So if we look at this patient, their residual volume measured is five liters, meaning they're holding 5.7 liters. They're holding about, you know, five Coke cans um, or two, you know, or almost three two liter cans in their chest um, that aren't participating really in ventilation. Um, their predicted should be 2.3, right? So their percent predicted is 248. So this is increased, okay? Total lung capacity, right? That would make sense, um, would be increased because residual volume is really high. Okay, so their actual total lung capacity measured with 7.51, it should be 2 point, or 6.41. So total lung capacity is increased, so kind of what we would expect. And then we look at DLCO, right? Well, is this an intrinsic versus extrinsic condition? Um, you know, pretty clearly intrinsic, just looking at some of these values, but DLCO is also reduced, meaning that there's an impairment in diffusion capacity as well, uh, which is not good. Now, this case also gives us an example of kind of what we're talking about that, and sometimes in very severe cases, we can also see FVC get reduced too. Um, so again, showing a little bit of an, a restrictive pattern where both FVV1 and FVC are both decreased, um, but it's still not enough to make the ratio above 0.7. So there, it's still clearly an obstructive defect. I just wanted to illustrate the point that sometimes in these very severe cases, severe to very severe, um, the FVC can also decrease as well. And again, just looking at their plot, notice that expiratory scooping, right? So they get, um, again, this is what their normal plot should look like. So peaks not only reduce in these patients, they, you know, they're, they have a pretty sharp drop off um, compared to where they should be at normally. Right, their flow drops off very, very considerably. That expiratory scooping, right? And again, similar um, to what we mentioned in the pulmonary pathophysiology lecture, um, quite often patients with COPD have a little bit of asthma as well. Again, I, I struggle with throwing asthma into the same grouping as you know emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Uh, but asthma is also usually concomitantly present in patients with COPD. So following their, uh, you know, bronchodilator, uh, their volumes got a little bit better, but they're still pretty, pretty poor, um, even at post-bronchodilator. Um, another thing that really kind of is, you know, elucidated from this curve, like we mentioned, let me clean this up a little bit for you guys. You know, let me clean this up for you. Okay. That um, we see... You know, FEV1 decrease, you know, we don't have a flow um, time curve here, or volume time curve here. But again, you know, they get, you know, it's a pretty decent FVC, right? Um, you know, if we look at these plots here, I'm going to get back to the zero point. Again, FVC is decreased, but, um, you know, it's still not as decreased as FEV1. Okay. So um, let's go through this last one. All right. So again, first thing we look at. FEV1, FVC ratio. Well, this ratio is 91%. What do we say? Obstructive, we are thinking point, or 0 0.7 or less for obstructive. For restrictive, it's going to either be, uh, it's going to be greater than 0 0.8, which is normal. Okay, so 0 0.8 is normal. Um, so it's going to be greater or equal to for a restrictive defect. Okay. So um, we then look at the percent predicted FVC. And in this patient, percent predicted FVC 
is less than 40 or 40 percent um, this would throw them into the classification of very severe restrictive defect which is less than 50 percent they're at 40 percent that's not very good and then again looking at other values that make you think restrictive fev1 is also decreased ratio is preserved and, and their decrease fairly similar remember even in that very severe obstructive defect where we mentioned again and severe obstructive cases fvc can also decrease um, but it's still not decreased more or similarly to the fev1 they're, they're the excitatory flow in that first second is still the biggest limitation in the patient with this restrictive defect both are decreased about the same percentage 40 percent 43 percent and if you start looking at other volumes that help clue us in, what do we say about most restrictive defects? Well, residual volume will be decreased. Again, their actual volume for residual volume is one liter. It should be about 1.98 liters for this patient, um, which represents a 51% of what it should be. Total lung capacity, again, um, that's gonna be decreased as well their actual total lung capacity is only about three liters, right? It's only about three liters, not very good, um, you know, or less than that, it's 2.68. They should be at six liters, okay? So total lung capacity is, you know, way reduced as well, percent predicted, okay? Lungs are just small, the lungs are, the volume is just not very good. They have big problems getting air in to the lungs restrictive defects just, just can't inflate not there's not a lot of, not enough volume and then again is this intrinsic versus extrinsic again you know there can be restrictive defects in patients um, i would say the restrictive defect this severe is probably not due um, to something that hasn't at least affected the lungs directly can happen on um, the way for us to really determine that um, outside of medical history is looking at the dlco and the DLCO, again, in an extrinsic or mechanical restrictive defect like obesity, chest wall issue, um, will still be preserved because we haven't affected diffusion. In an intrinsic disease like IPF, right, or sarcoidosis, or, you know, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which is a very aggressive fibrosis, this will be also reduced. And again, this should be above 80%, remembering you only be a really high affinity for um, carbon monoxide if we if we breathe it in All right so this is an example of a very very severe restrictive defect now um, again looking at our plot again this is the total volume that we can breathe out is just very small like this is this is what we got here FVC is like two liters not very good um, and then this is where their normal plot should be and as you can see you know as we mentioned the more severe, a restrictive defect gets the more this curve shifts to the left okay it shifts to the left again assuming if this is zero um, on this plot we have a left shift of the curve meaning that the operating volumes the lung volumes in um, these patients are less the lung volumes are just significantly reduced there's just not a lot of air coming in and there's not a lot of air coming out okay um, and again like we mentioned unlike our patients with um, a obstructive defect, we don't see that scooping. Um, they get, you know, whatever, le whatever a little bit of the air they can get in, they get out pretty similarly too. Okay, there's just not a lot moving in and out. So again, go back, going back to our matrix, make sure you guys review this again. And I hope I gave you guys some examples of how you kind of go through, through this systematically, just to make this easier. Again, you start with the actual values um, for um, you know, FEV1, and then get to your predicted values. You know, it shouldn't be pre predicted and predicted. It's FEV1% predicted here. All right. So hopefully this was useful to you guys. Again, go th I recommend going through some of these cases on this website just to get more practice. All right. And uh, that's PFT in a nutshell. Thank you.